but optimism is hard to come by when this is a reality. For more, we can speak now to Elena Bekatova, Democracy Fellow at the Center for European Policy Analysis. Elena, very good to have you on BBC News tonight. It appears the Ukrainians have seized the initiative in a way with this cross-border attack, this incursion into Kursk. What impact do you think this is having on the conflict? Thank you so much, Sumi, for having me. At this time, we have more questions than answers, as the Ukrainian government and the general staff of Ukraine have not commented yet. So we don't know the aims or implications, and we don't want to speculate. However, as you showed, various sources report that Ukrainian troops have advanced 10 to, to 30 kilometers into Russian territory, which is uh, 6 to 18 miles. This could be a tactical move to distract Russian forces and seize the initiative unexpectedly, while Russian forces advance on the Donetsk front, as we just uh, saw in the package in Konstantinovka, and where 14 people were killed and 43 injured. And yesterday, uh, the Russian forces dropped a glide bomb on the settlement of Solidova in Donetsk Oblast, killing two people and injuring 11 others. Mm -hmm. Ukrainian forces might have counterattacked elsewhere. So attacking the occupied Kherson region is very hard right now uh, because of the significant Russian units over there and uh, the need to cross the Dnieper River. Right. However, the fact, uh, if it is confirmed in terms of the Kursk region, it uh, it may show us that Ukrainians can have this initiative again and that they it can give the spark and the optimistic spark that Ukrainians can win this war and then they can conduct counteroffensives. This would appear to be a pretty serious escalation of an incursion into Russian territory. I mean, what do you think the impact is at this point for towns and villages along the border, both in Ukraine and in Russia? Uh, well, thank you so much for asking it. But according to um, Ukrainian allies, uh, we heard the Pentagon deputy press secretary today uh, who told that Ukraine is taking action to protect themselves in the Kursk region, uh, where Ukrainians um, are trying to um, trying to fight and putting enormous pressure on Russia. And the U.S. allows Ukraine to strike Russia with American-made weapons if it's related to a cross-border attack from Russian forces. Also, the same um, Ukrainians heard from the German side. They basically uh, stress that um, Ukraine has the right to self-defense. Uh, and right now, we understand that every day Russian forces attack Ukraine. And even like before uh, being on air here, I checked the latest news and Kherson was under attack again and again. So it means that the Ukrainian territory is being shelled extensively and every day. So that is why if it is true and if it is confirmed by the general staff of Ukraine afterwards, it may say that Ukrainians um, can take the initiative and can also um, potentially have the arguments in the future negotiations if they ever happen. Okay, so it's a little bit strategic as well when we talk about negotiations. What, uh, what happens if Ukraine is not able to hold this line in Russia? I mean, what is the strategy here? Is it to, to launch this incursion and then pull back? Uh, well, it's it's a good question, but as I have said, we don't have the official general staff information at this point, so we're waiting for it, and all the analysts and journalists are kind of checking the and updating the uh, official websites right now. But I feel that it's it's uh, it's it has a psychological effect because um, it it has a destabilizing effect on the Kremlin leadership, and um, in the coming days, if the Ukrainian army remains in these positions or continues to advance, we will see more and more chaos and the general loss of focus in Russia's strategy, and it will give a huge optimism to Ukrainians. But again, it's it's very hard to predict what will happen in the next few days. So yeah. I think that we, we just have to wait for the official information. And Elena, just one more question before we have to go. What about the general state of the battlefield in Ukraine? I mean, what does this incursion into Russia tell us about where things stand elsewhere? Well, unfortunately, as you have just shown, uh, the Donetsk Oblast is, um, is being shelled and uh, Kherson Oblast and Suma Oblast, uh, where, you know, in the north of Ukraine, uh, it had um, obligatory evacuations in March, in June, in August. And we are talking about not just 
uh, tens of people. We're, we are talking about thousands of people mm -hmm. who have to get everything together and just move somewhere else in Ukraine-controlled territory. And this is the reality for Ukrainians today. So, which means that um, Russian forces are unfortunately shelling and uh, the Donetsk Front, Kharkiv Front, and even Suma region is under extensive fire right. every day. Okay, we have to leave it there. Alina Bekatova, thank you so much for joining us tonight on BBC News. Thank you so much for having me.